I took an EV road trip from Boston to Detroit. Luckily, I got a Kia EV6 long range all wheel drive. It had a fully charged battery, which from my experience is kind of rare when you're renting an EV. Typically, they don't deliver it with a fully charged battery. Most importantly, it's amongst the best charging EVs you can buy and maybe the best EV you can rent. I went through Massachusetts without charging at all. I did a short YouTube video on that. I gave the Mass Turnpike a D minus for charging infrastructure. Honestly, they should be embarrassed. They had some low powered EV go stations. They weren't happy with them, so they got decommissioned. Now they have plans to replace those 50 kilowatt not fast chargers with equally slow 50 kilowatt units. So they have yet to start replacing those decommissioned units. But meanwhile, they are also going out for bid to install higher powered stations using the federal NEVI funds. That's the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, part of the infrastructure bill passed in 2021. Why are they not skipping that interim step and go right to the NEVI plan, which requires at least four chargers, not one, and a minimum power of 150 kilowatts, not 50? Because of this, I skipped charging in Massachusetts. Got a quick splash near Albany at a Stewart's ice cream shop. Just a quick splash because I knew I wanted to stop at a Tesla supercharger location in upstate New York that had the Magic Dock. That opens up their supercharger network to non-Tesla vehicles. Located in Verona, New York at the Turning Stone Resort Casino. By the way, many, many years ago, my POS Dodge Omni broke down at this very stop years before there was a casino. And at the time, EVs were still just a fantasy concept. So how did it go? Well, first of all, Hyundai Kia Genesis, they put their charging door at the right rear. All Tesla superchargers are designed for their vehicles, and they always have their charge port at the left rear. By design, non-Tesla cars with the charging port at the right rear or at the left front, they're going to block one of the stations being used by another Tesla. This is just a fact of life. Until Tesla redesigns the layout and or adds longer cables, which they will, this is just going to happen. But don't worry, at this point at time in the night, there were plenty of open spots. The Tesla app worked great. Eventually, we believe, Tesla will allow payments through other apps, like the Ford Pass app, because Ford signed that agreement, as have many other OEMs, with Tesla to open up the supercharger network. But the Tesla app that I used worked absolutely fine. I struggled to use the Tesla app while also recording using my same phone, so that's why the Magic Dock looks like it's already released. It was already released. I need to remember to carry a second phone when I'm doing these videos. Charging took almost 20 seconds to initiate on this non-Tesla. That's from plugging it in to actually dispensing the energy. Yes, a Tesla vehicle will do this much quicker. But personally, whether it's two seconds for a Tesla or 20 seconds for a non-Tesla really didn't bother me. Kind of don't care as long as it works. I started the session with just under 50% battery in the vehicle. The maximum charging speed I got was 97 kilowatts, and it was pretty consistent once it hits that rate. The superchargers are capable of up to 250 kilowatts, so why didn't it hit that higher value? I said the Kia EV6 is great for road trips. It charges quickly. That's because it's an eGMP platform vehicle that's based on an 800 volt architecture. These Tesla V3 superchargers were designed to support 400 volt architectures of the Tesla. Going forward, Tesla has new, more powerful V4 superchargers. They were designed to support Teslas with newer platforms like the Cybertruck, which is said to have a thousand volt architecture. Higher voltage systems deliver more power for a given current. Volts times amps equals watts. So it is not a scandal that I maxed out this vehicle at only about 100 kilowatts. Most other non-Tesla EVs will do much better than that. In this vehicle, when I reached 80% state of charge, it dropped like a stone to only about 6 kilowatts. It seemed to hover there for a while checking the vehicle before going back up to 50 kilowatts. Half the original peak rate of charging, but 
still not too bad beyond 80%. Overall experience for me was, was a B. For most non-Teslas, charging experience will be excellent. In my particular case, due to the type of vehicle I have, it was downgraded, so it wasn't fantastic. But let me talk to you about this particular location. If you're coming off the highway, it's less than a mile, so that's good. But it's a long walk from the superchargers into the casino. And once inside, I'm not sure what to expect. I didn't go inside. I assume you can sneak into it and find a bathroom somewhere. And if you ask to where you can buy a bottle of water, they'll probably offer you a cocktail. That was my experience with the Magic Dock. At the Turning Stone Casino, they do have a magic show coming up, so check that out if you happen to be in the area. If you want to check out my other videos, hit that like and subscribe button. I'd appreciate it, and thanks for watching.